Okay, right. Let's talk about dimming and brightness controls for LEDs. Now there's two ways that we can adjust the brightness of an LED. We can do it by current control, so we can regulate the amount of current that can pass through the LEDs, which was how I was making the LED strip brighter and darker at the start of the video. I was adjusting the current from my DC bench supply. I was regulating how much current the LEDs could consume and thus how bright they could get. But this requires a, uh, this requires a, ben a power supply with current control, uh, which is kind of bulky and awkward to do in a small space. There's a much easier way of doing this, and that's via PWM. Now, PWM is pulse width modulation. So let me show you a square wave. Now, what you're seeing on the screen of the oscilloscope here is a one kilohertz square wave with a 50% duty cycle. So this is literally just, uh, um, so this is a three and a half volt uh, voltage signal that turns off and on repeatedly. So it's going off, on, off, on, off, and so on. And it's doing that a thousand times a second, one kilohertz, so 1000 hertz. And a 50% duty cycle means that for every cycle of the wave, uh, it is off for 50% of it and on for 50% of it. And that is what a square wave is. Now, if you run a square wave through a LED, it will be it will flash on and off very fast. But because of persistence of vision in the human eye and in cameras, uh, that flashing will eventually turn into just a flat color. So uh, let's demonstrate that with this LED strip. So here we have a battery LED strip that is running at full brightness. So we're running three and a half volts through the LEDs at the moment. There's three and a half volts and we have a three and a half volts flat line going across the oscilloscope. Now, let me turn the brightness down on it. Ugh, now what's going on here, you say? Our voltage maximum is three and a half volts, but our voltage minimum is nil. So as you can see, what's actually happening is it's going off, then it's spiking on for a period of time and then going off again. Let me adjust the time signature on this so you can see that a bit clearer. So this is a very janky square wave. Because it's being produced by this poxy little LED controller, it's not a nice clean square signal. It's actually got these horrifying ramps, but whatever. Now, the oscilloscope is roughly interpreting this as approximately a low 40% duty cycle. Let's just pause that. So let's say for argument's sake, it's a 45% duty cycle. Now that means that for about 45% of this wave, so if we start from the vertical line and go to the next vertical line, uh, let's take half of that and go down a bit, you can see that about 40% of it, the signal is on. It's above this line. It's above what could be only interpreted as off. So 45% of the time, we're in a high state. And that, that square wave is switching on and off at a frequency of 257 times a second. So it's obviously targeting 250 hertz. So 250 times a second. So um, that is the, that's how this thing is controlling brightness. And if we put that back into uh, run, and if we turn the brightness up, so we've gone up by one notch, pause it. And now we're sort of, well, we're slightly brighter. We're looking for the high 40s. So let's go again. Sorry about the flickering here, it's because of the dodgy con connection. And next brightness level, we're now at 50. 55, 65, high 70s, so 77%. Now notice how the square wave is getting wider. We're on for almost 80% of the time and we only go off for just a moment. So that means that because the LED is on for more time, uh, we perceive it as being brighter because it is on for longer than it is off for. And that's how we're doing it. So that is called pulse width modulation. And loads of things are controlled by pulse width modulation or otherwise modulation in general, where you're alternating between states to do more in a single space of time. Now, the problem with this is if I demonstrate with my phone here, can you see that strobing weird pulsing effect there? 
That's because the camera can see the flickering in the LED, because the camera sees faster than the human eye does. Now, this is bad for photography. It's also bad because some people are particularly sensitive to this. Now, if we take a really bad case of flicker, let me demonstrate the dreaded 50 hertz flicker of AC voltage. Now, those of you who watched my channel from before my Logitech Brio got a firmware update, remember this dreaded flickering in the background that you can see. That's because the bench light that I use is AC powered, which means that bench light is effectively turning on and off 50 times a second, which generates that horrifying flicker. Now, this is not only really bad for when you're filming like I am, it's also really, it's just really nasty to look at. Um, flickering is just horrible. Now, personally, I can't really see 50 hertz flicker with my naked eye. I don't really notice it. Uh, I can tell it's there, but I don't see it per se. However, some people can really see that flicker. Some people can see it out the corner of their eyes. For some people, it gives them a headache. And so you can see if I point my camera at my workstation here, which has got an LED strip in it, you can see that very, very clear shimmering that the LED strip is causing in here. So this is really annoying for when you're filming stuff. It looks really horrid. So that's what we want to avoid. So what we want to do is get rid of that 50 hertz flicker. Um, but we also want to be able to control the brightness. So how do we do pulse width modulation, which is turning it off and off? It's in Pulse width modulation is making that flicker happen. Sorry, I'm just going to turn on my anti-flicker for you guys. Pulse width modulation is deliberately applying a flicker to the LED. So how can we control the brightness without being able to see that flicker? The answer to that is really, 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 really fast flickering. Okay, so here's the dimmer module that I'm going to be using. And just to give you a sense of scale, this thing is 25 mil by 25 mil. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a nice big clicky knob here. Uh, to turn it on and off. Um, so how this thing works is underneath that capacitor there, we've got two little ICs. Uh, on the left is a small voltage regulator to give low voltage to this chip. And the chip on the right there is actually an NE555. It's a 555 timer chip, just a surface mount jobby. So very classic configuration there. And what that is doing is that is a simple timer chip that is generating a, uh, a square wave output and that square wave output then drives this MOSFET up here, this black guy. Um, and so then the trimmer pot adjusts the duty cycle. So we change how quickly this guy is turning the actual um, voltage on and off. And that's it. That's all there is to it. There are more sophisticated versions of this that also have a polyfuse on them, just in case they get overloaded. This guy's rated for, uh, I think... I think the uh, spec sheet said this thing was rated for like uh, 90 watts or something like that. And it can do a very high, it can do a surprisingly high load because it's not actually regulating anything. It's just turning it on and off very fast. Um, and yeah, it also reckons that it is um, rated for 20 kilohertz. Um, however, uh, the more expensive versions of these that have the poly switches on them were only rated for 10 kilohertz. And when you see the uh, oscilloscope output from this guy, I think we'll see why. Um, the oscilloscope output from this guy is actually pretty rough. Um, and I suspect that the slightly fancier versions that have the protection polyfuse and 10 kilohertz are more stable and give a cleaner square wave output. However, uh, as you'll also see, it does work. It does the job, so I don't really care. So let's see it in action. Okay, so we've got the fancy dimmer all hooked up. And firstly, just a quick explanation, just in case you've spotted the voltage va values here and you're going, what on earth is going on with those voltages? Um, this dimmer actually drives the cathode, not the anode. So we're reading the voltage drop uh, um, across the system here, not the total voltage input. Uh, and that's why the voltages are all low, because this is the voltage drop, not the voltage used. Um, uh, we are running at 9 volts input here. I'm under running slightly just because of reasons. Um, but yeah, so that's what that's all about. Now, the super important thing to note is we still have a pretty sketchy looking uh, um, square wave, uh, which is just as a result of the way it works. However, as you can see in the top left there, we're running 
18,000 times a second. We're up at 18 kilohertz here instead of 250 hertz. So we are orders of magnitude faster. We still have the same duty cycle and switching si um, square wave that you can see here. However, we're doing it at a vastly higher speed. So up at this kind of switching speed, nothing will ever see the, f the flickering from the LEDs. You will not see that, you know, unless you've got some kind of obnoxious high-speed camera, but obviously that's, that's different kind of things. So yeah. Um, so if we watch, uh, as, I change the, as I change the brightness here, we're currently at sort of as low as it can go without switching off. And uh, that is approximately sort of um, the low mid 80s there. And if we increase the brightness, because we're driving the cathode, the duty cycle actually drops. So we're reducing, uh, the duty cycle is the off time and we're reducing the off time. And as you can see, that square wave is now widening out. And if we go all the way up to maximum brightness, as you can see, it peters out until we're basically on all the time. And we're now seeing a zero voltage drop. It's the full voltage going straight down the negative rail. And then as I decrease the brightness, we start driving the cathode. We're switching the cathode off and on rapidly. And we go, we're going for longer off periods, bigger off periods, which reduce the brightness. And there we go. And if I turn it off completely, we then start floating. So there we go. So that is our fancy, that's our fancy dimmer. And that is how we can do a very compact dimmer without flicker.